What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Concord Health Podcast. And today, my guest is a good friend of mine, um, professional boxer and personal trainer, Norris Thompson, um, who's going to give us some good info today. We're going to have a good chat, a bit of fun, some comedy, um, and look at what the life of a boxer really looks like, because um, it's definitely, I've, I've been there, I've boxed um, as an amateur. We boxed together at the same club, in fact. And there, there's a lot of, the boxing's a great sport, but there's a lot of misconceptions by the general public as to, to what boxing is and what goes on behind the scenes. Um, and, and especially when, when I finish boxing, um, and it's definitely not about me, um, this podcast, but it's a perspective, is a lot of people would say to me, oh, why did you finish? Why did you stop? It's so cool boxing. But a lot of people don't see what goes on behind the scenes and, it's for some people that is the life they want and they're really successful out of it and they inspire a lot of people. Um, and there's been some amazing individuals over the years um, that have come through boxing, but th there is another side to it. So we're going to talk about both sides and Norris's journey and where he's been at. So um, yeah, Norris, let's, I mean, I, I mean, how, how are you doing? How are you doing with the lockup anyway at the moment? We're in quarantine for coronavirus. <laughs> Dead boring, dead, dead, dead boring. Um, what are you, doing? Are you doing? Anything to, are you doing anything? Oh, to no, no, no. I mean, well, so what I decided was um, just to offer my clients free help. So a load of um, workout plans, um, doing online classes, just going live um, on my page, and just you know, just give. I'm not charging. I don't think it's right to charge anyone right back now. Um, a few people give me donations, believe it or not. So that was nice. Yeah. They've sent me and they've gone, no, I'll take that. I'm like, I didn't even ask for it. But I think right about now, you know, it's just help people out. Um, and it's, um, to be honest, it's actually given me some sort of like, I know it might be a bit of an exaggeration, but some sort of purpose. Because you can easily just stay at home. You know, I live on my own and, you know, I've got, I've got TV, I've got Netflix, I've got all that. And you can easily just fall into this um, lazy routine. Um, you know, I was a PT in, and it's just like, oh, I watch TV. Like, you keep falling asleep. I don't understand how I can fall asleep so many times. I've done anything. Um, and, and then as soon as I jumped on that, started working with my clients again, I've got the motivation back, got a bit of focus. Um, and it was nice to hear my clients, you know, they're, they're all quite thankful of it. Um, so I'm going to jump on that. So just do workout plans, just email it over to them, just get loads of feedback um, from them. And I think it's going to make me a better PT when we obviously come off this lockdown as well. Yeah, I think there's a couple of good points there. Like giving something for free is always good. Um, that always comes back round in a positive way. You don't, you know, you don't, you don't get unless you give, first of all. Um, so that's always a good thing. And that will come back round, round to you 100%. Yeah. Um, but another interesting thing is that even you, who's a, a really self-motivated individual, found this initial lockup, like you're getting into a rut. And Mm. Other people who aren't boxers or, or don't do high level sport or something like that um, will appreciate hearing that. That actually, you know, we we all go through some lulls, but there's there's a difference between like a lull and an extended period of just pure laziness and, and finding yeah. yourself in this long term rut. I mean, I actually got coronavirus. I, I contracted the virus, so the first two weeks yeah, saying, I couldn't yeah. even get out of bed. I like I done nothing, but. Now I've started to feel better. I've ordered a saxophone, learning a language. I'm like, yeah, like I'm doing all these like random things that I kind of always wanted to do, but haven't done. I'm exercising every day again. So it's like, it, it, it takes your mind. It can take your mind into this other place where you think, you know what? I'm always in this cycle of like working out, working on my business or working out. Yeah. Let me come across, now I've got some more time and be a bit more creative. So it's, uh, that, that can be quite a cool thing. Do you, know, do you know what? When you told me you had it, I thought you were exaggerating the, the symptoms, to no. be honest. And people are telling, um, people are calling me and telling me the exact same thing. Like, you know when you go, oh, I, can't, I couldn't even get up. And I was like, oh, I can't want to lose. Like, I know how strong you are. So for you to say that, I was just like, ah, oh, he's exaggerating it just a bit. You know, we all do the exaggerated story just to get our point across. Yeah. So when you were telling me, I was just like, even if, if you go like some messages, I'm like, ah, oh, come on, surely not. But then I'm hearing people having the same thing. They can't get up. They, 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 they you know, they can't stand. They're um, weak. 
um, they were in pain. And I'm like, oh, flip. It's like word for word what you're saying as well. So it is crazy. And uh, I've, got the, I've got the Italian gene, so I'm prone to over exaggerating. But I'm telling you now, I've never done anything like it. I, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, there was two weeks before I competed in a competition. Yeah, and I, I saw it. Saw it. So I was feeling yeah. strong. Mm. I'm telling you, I got to the point during the virus where walking from the bedroom to the couch, it just oh, took goodness. everything. And I've never, I've never, it's weird. It's not like a flu. It's, yeah. It just, it's like someone just switches the lights off and you've got, five percent left in your body just to survive mm. um i mean i'm very yeah. fortunate that it did get yeah. in my chest and lungs but i'm yeah. not covering whereas some people don't yeah. um so i mean like for, for anyone that, that's not taking this seriously um some people might be listening to this after the corona thing has died down but if you're listening to it kind of you know within the next few weeks or months take it seriously it's dangerous young mm -hmm. people are dying and even if you don't die it takes a lot out of your system um, mm. So stay at home, but be productive with it. Um, mm. <clears throat> and, and, you know, don't, don't be silly about anything. So mm. let, let, listen, let's talk about your, your journey as a boxer, first of all, because it's, you've been doing mm. it a long time. Um, so yeah. I mean, where, what made you start? Where did you start? Uh, what, what, you right. what, what, I mean, what's the journey been? I know you've done a ton. Yeah. Um... So I think it started back in, I want to say 2015, 20, um, sorry, 2005, look at that, 2005, 2006. Um, yeah, but no, it wasn't um, in the boxing gym. It was just the normal gym, like a, a bodybuilder's gym. Um, and obviously what we've, we've started to finish, coming towards the end of um, secondary school. And obviously, you know, everyone's getting a bit conscious now. You're, on a, you're a teenager. Now, so you want to get a bit bigger. So I jumped into my friend, um, knew a gym. It was a bodybuilder's gym in Edmonton. Um, Tower, I want to call it Tower Fitness or Tower Gym. Um, and literally, he used to go there. I'm much bigger than me. You know, it was a short. I'm still, still, I'm still short. But, um, you know, so he, he, he used to go there. He brought me in. Anyway, we started lifting weights, get quite big. Um, kind of fall in love with weight training. All upper body, no legs. Um, and we were smashing it, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. and uh, we were smashing it. And then um, I remember getting uh, someone down my street um, was throwing away his bench press, um, some York bench press um, and barbell. So um, I was, he's like, oh, you're skinny. You're like, a, you're, like a, you're like a twig. Do you want it? And I was just like, and no one has called me skinny in my life. Like, I'm that loud, like, cool <laughs> black kid at school. And, you know, I had the mouth, had the clothes and everything. And no one ever called me skinny. And then when he called me skinny, I kind of like the world froze. And I looked at myself, yeah. Brought down a peg. <laughs> yeah. oh. And I looked at myself and well, I go, oh, flip, I am skinny. I'm going to believe it. So uh, with that, with training my friend, um, just smashed it. I mean, oh, I didn't know what to do. So I was just, remember, for me, fitness was like Dragon Ball Z, um, you know, like just constantly training. So I remember, I didn't even know sets. I just, you kept pushing. I kept pushing reps, 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 reps until you can't push anymore. That's so how, I'm, I, yeah, yeah. Um, um, so yeah, so anyway, one, one day my mum's friend saw me training in the back garden. He was Tony. Um, he knew um, Jimmy Oliver, um, God, um, God rest his soul. Um, and he he was just like, oh, I saw this weight training. It's not real fitness. Um, and he goes, I go, no, I'm getting pretty big. At the time, I was getting pretty big. Uh, and he goes, oh, give me a punch in the arm. Let me see what you've got. So he turned, uh, so I was like, all right. Well, so Jimmy, Jimmy said that. Uh, no, 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 Tony. <laughs> oh, Tony. <so> Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, so, um, I jumped it a bit. So he goes, oh, <laughs> Jimmy didn't say that. So he goes, oh, give me a punch. And then I was like, I didn't think nothing of it. I was just like, all right. And my friend Michael was there at the time. And then I just remember, just it was a relaxed shot. Obviously, I wasn't trying to like show off anything. So I just gave him one. I think it was really relaxed. Shoulders were relaxed. And I just hit him. And I'm not going to lie. It did make a really nice noise. Like, you know, you, I don't know if when you chin someone or you hit someone. And it just makes that sweet noise. Yeah. But I didn't think of it. I don't know. And he didn't react. He just looks at me. He paused for a second. And he looks at me. He nodded. And he was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. 
Two weeks later, mum turns around and goes, um, what did you do to Tony? I go, what do you mean? He goes, oh, apparently you're like, you have to go to the hospital. Um, he had a bruised <laughs> bone issue. I mean, you know, and so from there, obviously he knew Jimmy and he realised, you know, like, you know, kid's got a decent punch. Um, sorted it, um, arranged that I would come down to Finchley um, after like one day at college. And um, he drove up, uh, probably, it had to be probably a Monday, Monday night, the gym was absolutely packed. And I just remember like, obviously walking to a boxing gym is re really intimidating, but I think I was more just like, I couldn't believe that this is what something that people did, if that makes sense. Mm. It's like, you just see what you remember, when you see a boxer, you just see them on TV. You don't understand it as a process, you know, working in the gym, you know, you just think they're boxers and that's it. Um, so I remember walking in the gym, and Finchley ABC being packed, um, so much going on. And all I remember was um, Jim, um, Jimmy Oliver just walking over to me with a big smile, you know, a really big smile. And it was a bit like tunnel vision, really weird. It was like a bit of a, like, a glow around him. I'm not, I'm not even lying. That's how I've got the memory in my head. He walks up to me with a big smile and he's like, oh yeah, you're Norris. And you know what they say, you know, if Jimmy li liked you, he likes you. I'm yeah. like, so <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, for anyone who listening, he was, one of the original boxing coaches at Finchley ABC. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's quite a well-known club. Um, it's a, mm. quite a famous amateur boxing club in London. Um, and there's a lot of famous fighters that have come out of there, famous pros that a lot of you guys listening would know now. Um, yeah. So, so Jimmy, was, Jimmy and John were like the originals. They're the two, two brothers. And so when, when he's mentioned Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy Oliver is one of the main coaches. Yeah, so yeah, Jimmy came over. He liked, I think he liked me um, from there. Um, so I just come down to the gym. Um, and obviously, you know, from there, you started meeting all the, all the other coaches. Um, uh, who you got? You got, yeah, so John, um, John and Oliver, who I didn't meet till probably later on. Um, but Gary Foley, uh, you had Sean Murphy, uh, Joe Smythe, um, John Shannon. Oh, look, if I'm forgetting anyone, but you, so you slowly meet them and um, a boxing yeah, Colin, then, Colin Webster, probably. Oh, yeah. Do you know what? I didn't meet Colin like, um, initially. I think he was at a different gym. Oh, I didn't meet Colin until oh. later on, like part, the second part uh, or this, the next chapter of boxing. That makes sense. Like the yeah. first part. Maybe I did see him, but I can't remember. You know how it is. You know, I was just a young kid in, um, in and out. And yeah, boxing was good. I, I think my first sparring, like typical. Finchley, first sparring partner was a heavyweight. So, so probably... how, how long were you training before you started sparring? Because people, people often, they go into a boxing club, right? And yeah. I've been there. I remember the first time I walked into a boxing club, I was absolutely bricking myself. I was like this little yeah. mouse. But like a normal everyday person, they do a bit of pads. They go to like a, yeah. a nice, these new kind of boxer size nice boxing clubs. And yeah. they box, they hit pads, they hit bag. Um, yeah. Oh, my boxing's getting quite good, but jumping into sparring is something completely different. And in my opinion, yeah. I don't know the true percentage, but from what I've seen over the years, I think 80, 85% of people that spar their very first time never, ever come back. They literally, yeah. <laughs> they'll, 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 they'll hit bag and pads and talk a good game yeah. for like months normally, sometimes four, five, six months. And they had their first sparring session and it's like uh, the realist, the, the realistic side of it is like, oh, I've gone about this. It's, it's basically an organized fight at that point. It's like an organized fight, which is not as bad as saying like an organized, yeah. It's, I won't say it goes as far as a street fight, but it's like an organized fight. So it's, that's an how organized, I it. it's definitely an organized, not very well. No, it's not, no, it's not a fight, but it feels like that. That's what I mean. When I say it, that's what it felt for me, but like, I felt like, oh, I'm gonna have a fight. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Sparring is not that, but for me, being like only like 16 year old, 16, yeah, walking into there, and then they're like, oh, get a gum shield, you know, they're talking all this like lingo, and you know, boxing is a great like sport, but I think it's like it's probably like 20 years behind any other sport, and they don't really, you know, it's good. It's, it's I guess it's kind of a gives you kind of a rite of passage kind of feeling, um, and they, but there's not much about it, they don't tell you what's going to happen too much. They're just saying, oh, get a gum shield, you know, yeah. you know, your basics, and you're just thrown in. 
And I, I, think... I mean, I, I, I was going to the club, I think, for five months before I sparred. And yeah. I think four or five months. And, and the worst thing is I was actually starting to get quite good on the pads and on the bag. Yeah. And it was almost the worst thing that happened to me because I remember one <laughs> yeah. of the coaches saying, oh, you, you, you're starting to look quite good. Let's do some sparring. And, I, and I'll never, ever forget my first spar. Who was it? Weights above me. And <laughs> lit stuff. me up. Lit me up like a Christmas tree. A boy from Islington. Can't remember the boy's name. And he was oh. just way too heavy handed and way too yeah. heavy. He was like a 12 bouter. And he just lit me up for four <laughs> pounds. And I sat in the changing rooms after that Finchley changing room was like so old school as well. And like dirty and you're just there and everyone can see you. And I was just covered in blood. It was oh, just yeah. everywhere, my nose, my, my bottom, my lips. If for anyone that's listening and not watching, it's like if you pull your lip out and turn your lip the other way around, the whole of my lips will cut up and shred yeah, 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 yeah. You know, My ears were hurting, my eye was swollen. And it's at that point you think, I'm never coming back or I'm going to man up and come back. It's yeah, like yeah. there is that one point in every boxer's journey where you think, I'm doing this or I'm not. It's just a clear line now. So that, that's what? how it happened for me. I don't know how, how long it took you for sparring. Mine was a totally different experience. Um, and, and that says a lot as well. I think with me, it was, um, I was nervous. Absolutely nervous. The whole day at college, I don't remember what was being taught that day because I was just thinking about, oh, I'm, I'm basically going to have a fight tonight. I'm going to have a fight tonight. And I, that's all I thought about. Um, so I came to the gym, got in there, and um, I think the first person I spotted was, um, remember Sean Cleary? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was my first sparring partner. He was and, a big um, heavyweight, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, what was only fair is that I think, I think I've got at least like probably three, three or two years on him, age-wise, or probably yeah. even more. Um, but it's just a bit harder because he's so big. So I think that's where Gary Gary was like, yeah, you know, he's he's a, he's even though he's huge, you know, he's he's much younger than me. And I, I was like, even though I was sixteen, I was thinking I was like quite muscular, quite a big. Because obviously from all the training I've been, uh, weights I've been doing, so yeah, I kind of you're a big. What are you a welterweight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, you're, like, a, you're, like, you're a very lean, muscled welterweight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I think that kind of balanced it out, and you know, I jumped in there, and I think I. I basically couple, I just remember closing my eyes, putting that, sticking out my jab. Now, yes, I'm quite strong, whatever, but I think what I got, what got to Sean, because I, I did his nose, but what you've got to understand, I'm more like, I think I'm five, five foot seven, and he was probably like just under six foot at the time, um, but I've got super long arms. Mm. And I don't think, even though he was bigger, he just didn't calculate it. A lot of people don't calculate it. I've had people tell me after a fight, like, you've got the most deceiving um, arm length um, reach out there. So I think I've just stuck out my hand. He's walked forward and he's done his nose. A little, I have done his nose, a little bit of blood. It was nothing. Um, and then Gary just came in and goes, oh, yeah, you're going to be a good one. And we just both, like, all of us laughed, and Sean as well. So... Um, and that was like, it was really, as much as it was so nervous, big build up, it was actually quite funny when that happened. They had Gary laughing, looking at me laughing, and it was just a big you know, mix up. And then after that, it's just, you know, sparring. I was, yeah, like I said, I think you had like a harder thing, um, introduction to it. For me, it was kind of more fun, you know, especially, you know, doing that in the, my first round. It was just a bit like encouraging. Yeah, it's, fu it's funny how that, I mean, that is life though, isn't it? That's, and that's what people listening to has got to realise is that, uh, boxing is a really condensed, extreme version of what life throws at you. Yeah. I mean, what life throws at you. And we had two completely different experiences there, mm. but still both managed to carry on and get to like a decent level. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I, I remember that sparring session more than any sparring session I've ever had in the 12 years after that, because mm. it was just, I, I did not enjoy that experience one bit. Yeah. Every single time I let my hands go, I got I absolutely cracked because I just, I, I must have just been all wrong. Everything was square yeah. and open. Yeah. And it's like a real, I mean, it was probably the best thing that happened to me because it, mm. it, it wiped out any ego w within seconds. Like it was yeah. just gone, it's finished. So can't get it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That happens. But 
it's uh it's interesting actually because you would have had some tough really tough spars later down the line the other way around yeah of course yeah um and then like boxing when you do really well um yeah you got you, you're them automatically automatically like upgraded to opposition so from there i think my next sparring partner that i can actually remember was sparring joe winston oh <laughs> Joe um, Winston. People listening will not know who Joe Winston is, but he should have been one of the most talented professionals at the UK scene. Easy. You know I mean? Absolutely. Very, very, very good. Um, the gypsy boy. Yeah, and gypsy boy, but he, him and his yeah, brother, go, go, you guess. Oh, him and his brother, man. But Joe, was it Joe you said, or John? Yeah, Joe, yeah, the older brother. Joe was, I think, Joe was particularly good. Um, he, he he made boxing look easy. He was very very like, good, and it was crazy that one thing I couldn't understand was that he. I think I'm, I'm at least four years his senior. Do you think? Yeah, I'd say so. Three, two, three. He was a junior. If I'm a, I was just I was just a senior, like a, a young senior. I don't even know why. I swear I was still a junior. But they had me boxing men anyway. But um, but he was a teenager. I mean, I mean, like a sorry, like a twelve-year-old boy. He made boxing look easy. Like I couldn't understand. Like I was, I say, I've got him in the corner, and he just slips right out. And I'd be like, "How has that even happened?" Like that was my, that was my probably the best thing for me having such a hard um, um, opposition in sparring. Um, I think he, he was a silver European champion, junior champion at the time. So that was great for me. Um, and, and we, like I say, he never really hurt me. But he just, he would just outbox me, absolutely outbox me. And it would just, it would be so frustrating. So when some of these moves, I think I like most of the moves that I have have come from those early spars of him being so slick and just being a natural. Mm. Um, after him, or oh, with him was Billy Moy. So he was like the top, um, again, like, I want to say like junior, senior, that middle age um, in the middle, sitting in the middle. He was stopping everyone. He was my next sparring partner. And then we just automatically upgraded. So, you know, I, I remember sparring all these other guys and I was doing all good for the first probably two couple of weeks and then just upgraded. And then all of a sudden, you know, bottom of the pile and then you've just got to, you've just got to get better. You've just got yeah, to get better. Yeah, you've got to climb that mountain, haven't you, man? Yeah. You've got no choice. You're going to get dealt with a lot. Yeah. You know, when when you're boxing, if something being a boxer is something you want to be, you're going to have to go through it. Every yeah, yeah. every good club puts you through that. I mean, the Cronk is famous for that. The Cronk yeah. in um, the Cronk's in Detroit, right? Yeah, the Cronk yeah, is yeah. Um, it's famous for just throwing fighters in and just just yeah. seeing what you got. And basically, you're sparring is harder than your fights. Yeah. Um, Tyson Fury, the character he is, he's obviously fighting out of the Cronk. Um, at the moment, and he's improved massively yeah. in his last fight. But all those fighters over the years, like Tommy Hearns yeah. and whatnot, it's just that there's something character building massively mm. about starting at the bottom of the pile and having to work your way up. And yeah, yeah. Like really well in life. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and then obviously, when you see the advancement in yourself, it gives you confidence. Mm. Um, and people don't, uh, if people don't know, I think <clears throat> the trait that you need to work on <clears throat> sorry, the most when it comes to sport is your confidence. Yeah. Especially, um, I want to say, uh, as a as a as in a man sport that's full contact, it is confidence. And I don't know how people <laughs> um, perceive that. No, not when I say confidence, I mean as in you need to know what you want to do and know that you can execute it. That level of confidence. All right. Because don't get me wrong, I've seen some guys that probably you know nervous if you speak to them. They know they're all over the shop, but then well, as soon as that bell goes and they're like seconds out, they just become this whole different new character altogether. So, I mean, I'm not talking about confidence. I mean, he's a you know confident kind of you know, chat people up and all that. I mean, just in himself and what he's doing, he knows he can do it. Yeah. And and you see it all the time in boxing. As soon as that bell goes, but man, they're just something else, and the confidence just comes out of nowhere. Yeah, it it could go one way or the other. Um, sport is so yeah. psychological. Any sport. I had yeah, a good golfer yeah. on the other day, and um, same sort of thing. It's like you could be so good when you practice, and as soon as you go to hit that ball, I mean, I'm still here. Yeah, so just something goes. It just some yeah. kind of psychology. 
something mental just gets in there as a mental block. And sport mm. is, yes, the physical work has to be done, but it's so much psychology, whatever sport. Man, yeah, man. The, the difference is with boxing or MMA is that if it goes there, you're, you're in danger. You're going to put yourself in serious danger and you've got yeah. to get your mind right because you've got to keep yourself safe in that ring. It is dangerous. We've all been hurt. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. In there. But what, so what, what, how, talk about your career as, as an amateur. What did you win? Oh, so yeah, so like, let's, um, let me um, I can talk for days. So let me speed it up. Uh, did all right. I mean, I was going through a lot as well. Um, I've always been kind of like a, I haven't had much support. You know, I come from the typical like African family where, you know, if it's not, if it's not so like an amateur, academic kind of like career, high academic career path. It's not really well supported, I think, you know. Um, and it's not it's not like, it's not a sob story. It's just the way it is. It's just the culture, if anything, you know. Yeah. You're not looking to be a doctor, engineer, you know. It's a bit, it's a bit odd, you know. So doing something like boxing, you know, she was, uh, my mum was like, she was okay with it, you know. You know, I was getting probably a bit of attention that I wanted because um, it's a, you know, it's a attention sport, attention seeking sport, you know. Hence the the shorts, the costume, the bravado that you know that goes on, you know. Um, and yeah, I, I, you know, so I was doing all right. I mean, I think I had raw talent. Um, no, I wouldn't even say raw talent. I think I had a, I had a potential, raw potential. If that's a if that's a real thing, had raw potential uh, and potential to do things. I mean, you know, I probably you know was a bit. Some of that would probably tense up a bit too much. So you no, know, that would affect endurance and stamina. Um, strong, probably. I wasn't really disciplined. With my hands had my hands down, but you know had good reactions, which it can be good in certain um, certain times. But then. You know, you can, you can get caught cool and then take a shot that you don't need to take a shot in. Um, so I learned a lot. I kind of learned late, probably. Um, but amateurs, I did all right. I did, um, I think I got a, what did I get? I got a bronze medal, the novices, the first round. Um, that was a uh, class B. So that was like under 20 bouts, got bronze there. Then I, that opened me up for the ABAs. Got a uh, one to London ABA senior level. Um, yeah, yeah, that was ages ago. Um, and you even done, then, I've done the uh, world. Oh, uh, yeah, so from there, um, obviously, I kind of everybody was on the route to you know 2012, you know, you oh, are the Olympian, <laughs> it's not that easy, but um, you know, um, that was 2011, so you know, trying to get onto um, GB squad. Um, I think the what I got, I got picked for London, uh, for the army. Um, had to fight, I forgot who, I want to say something like Slater or something. And basically what had happened, they got my weight wrong. So I had to fight a middleweight. <laughs> and <laughs> I had to fight a middleweight. If you've never boxed before, changing one weight division can make a huge difference. Yeah. yeah. Really um, uh, John, John Oliver. I, I wouldn't blame John Oliver, but something happened. And then um, John turned around and goes, um, I go, is that my kid? And he goes, yeah. And then like, John will like, obviously we, we were no mugs. So when it was, at, when I was probably in front of their coach, yeah, we're all like, yeah, we'll take it. We're all gonna back down for a fight. And then when we turn around, John goes, oh, I feel put the weight, weight class wrong straight away. And I'm just like, oh, great. Um, so my first like representation of London and um, yeah, it was the wrong weight class. Um, I, I was strong, but I think you've got to respect weight classes, you know. When someone's a natural weight, and you know, an army boy as well, it's not going to be easy. Um, so I lost that. But then from there, just, you know, I remember just training and everyone going, why don't you just box for Ghana? So everyone in the team was just like, go and box for Ghana, see what can happen. And I was just like, ugh, really do I really want to, you know, just jump, jump to international boxing of a whole new, like, you know, federation, you know, I don't know them, they don't know me. Uh, but anyway, sent an email, you know, got in contact. Um, I told them my credentials, what I'd won. I think we'd been to Vegas 2008 and 2010, um, put that on there. Um, uh, and yeah, they got back to me. Um, the president of the federation, was he the president? Yeah. Um, 
or the overseer anyway, um, he came down, he came over um, to London, came up to the, came up to the gym. Um, and it was crazy um, because I think I'd stopped training. You know how it is with boxing. Sometimes you just get a bit down. And I think I stopped training for uh, like probably a month. Um, and then in that month, they, um, they contacted me. And I, was, I remember seeing the email for like, go on the federation. I was like, oh, flip. They want to come and see me. But, you know, that's why you should always, despite what happens, stay ready. You know, you've got to always stay in it. You never know when opportunity could come up. Um, so he said, the, oh, well, he's coming down. And I was like, I was bricking it. Because obviously I had been training. I remember calling up Sean. Sean, because you haven't been in the gym for like a, a month. And I was just like, Sean, can you just help me out? So um, he came down, did pads with Sean. And I'm telling you, 30 seconds in, I was blown. <laughs> I was absolutely blown because it was obviously nerves as well. Because you're like, feeling. yeah. And I've been training and Sean's looking at me, doing his best. Like, you know, you know, Finchie style. We don't try and make anyone look good. It's about if you can do it, you can do it kind of thing. And Sean's looking at me, like trying his best to make me look good on the pads. Um, and I'm just thinking, oh, after this whole stuff, oh, I've, I've completely... <laughs> I'm, career's I'm, finished. Yeah, career's finished. And then, um, and then um, after, he goes, yeah, I like, I, like, I like the way you move. And I was just like, yeah. Still so like, oh, just wait for um, his secretary who will get in contact with me. Uh, for the next week, they send an um, electronic um, flight ticket. So they're flying me out to Ghana. So flew out to Ghana. When I was there, met the whole team. Like, the, 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 the whole team, I mean, I wouldn't say the whole team, but probably like 60% of them just hated me. They were thinking, who's this kid, come from London, thinks he can jump on the squad. Uh, you know what boxing's like, you your squads. When you had like, a lot of uh, gym come down to your gym, you know, you, you were told to like destroy them when it came to like a group spa kind of thing. So anyway, I've got there, they've hated me. They've been taking a look at me. You know, my flash gear um, compared, compared to what they had, which wasn't even flash, but, you know, I'm sure it looks like some stuff they've never seen. Um, so they, some of them were nice to me. Some of them just, you could tell me, they, they hated me. Um, but then obviously you had to have a box off because there was a lot of kids at um, 69 kg. Um, that's what weight international. Um, and so we, I think I was there for like, with three days or three, three, four nights, that's fight him on the, like, the fifth day. And I didn't realize how big it was. It was a big thing over there. So they had the news, um, sports channels came down, and um, Azuma Nelson was ringside. And I, I was like, oh, flip, like it's a big thing. I thought, yeah, I thought it was going to be, I thought it was just going to be a simple little like in, in like in house spa, but it was basically a fight. Um, and I remember I was with there with Michael uh, Bediaku, um, Amo Bediaku, me and him went out there. He was light welter, I was welter. So two, two, two London boys uh, representing. And we're getting in the ring now, and he goes to me, Norris, like, I mean, for one thing I got advice from John Oliver is that when you go out there, these, these African boys, which I know, they're super strong, super, super strong. Um, and they're there to be hit. That was one thing he said, they're there to be hit. Super strong, but they all hit. So get in, get out, like use your jab, use your movement. I said, yes, boss, did that. Um, when I got there, I got a bit of advice. And it's funny how people give you bits of advice. And you know, this was more of a joke, but I remember Michael going to me, Norris, like, be careful. There's a, there's a, there's a ditch in that ring. And there's like a big hole. And I go, what do you mean? <laughs> it goes, <laughs> There's a big hole in that ring. <laughs> I go, what are, you, what are you talking about? So we, we jumped in just before our fight, and luckily he shows me where it was. And I think it was just, I want to say, just off like off, just off the center. He goes, be careful with it and work around it. Uh, so these are the conditions we were fighting in. But uh, we get there, the whole news press are there, um, and uh, Azuma Nelson's there, the president, the boxer president's there, the whole country's watching basically um because obviously you know i'm i'm the away guy even though my parents both my parents are gone in i'm still i'm i was born here so they you can see everybody wanted me to um to lose the whole of them just like shouting for their for their kid and i remember just going in bell bell goes and i just remember what my whole mindset was just don't get involved don't have a fight because if i have a fight the judges could obviously easily give it to him 
Um, and uh, you know he's a strong kid as well. He's he's done. He did the Milan. Um, I want to say two thousand and nine um, championship. Um, he's done so much all African games. He's been there. He's done it. Um, so I remember getting in there and just remember what John said to me. He said, "Don't get involved." And I just literally, honestly, that to this day, that was probably the best I've ever boxed. Boxed his head off, and you know, to a point where because I knew he wanted to hurt me so much, um, it made boxing easy because I knew at one point that like, he's gonna come with a hard left hook. You know, you can just feel when someone wants to hit you because they want to hit you so much. So it was, he was so easy to read. And I remember sitting under a left hook and he, he threw it so much intent that he nearly, fe nearly fell over. And the whole place was just quiet. Um, and I'm just doing this in front of all these countrymen and, and it was such a good feeling. Obviously I won, I got picked. Um, and from that, uh, Zuma Nelson was just like, he was impressive, you know, he knew what it was all about. He's been to the, he's been around the world. He knows how hard it is to box when you're not at home. Um, so he took me under his wing and we literally had to train at his house. Um, every morning. Great, and, great fire, great fire. Great, great fire. I, I don't think anyone's told that guy that he's retired because when he says he's going to train us, we're all like, oh, okay, what time? And he goes, 5.30. Lou, have you ever trained at 5.30? In the morning. In the morning. Oh, no, I couldn't no, believe it. Never. No, so we'd get up. The good thing, because it was so early in the morning, we'd catch a cab, me and Michael. And we'd catch a cab, probably have to wake up at like, say what, five o'clock, right? Get ready quickly. Uh, with your black man time, that's hard as well. <laughs> really hard. <laughs> Trust me. All right. It, and you don't sleep because those five hours that you've got from okay, let's say I would, I would go to bed at ten, but your your probably your brain's already waking up at four, mm. so you don't really sleep. All right, so we get there and we're all like, ah, oh, there's no way we could be training this early. We get there, no word of a lie. Azuma Nelson is shadow boxing, full sweat, yeah. five thirty. I'm not surprised. And, and we're like, what? Like, I couldn't believe it. Um, and so he's got this policy, he goes to me, um, Michael goes to me, he's trained with him a couple of times, he goes, you know, um, when you're training with Zim Nelson, you, you can't drink water. I'm like, what? He goes, you're not allowed oh, to drink. Old so old school, is, you know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I said, nah, 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 I don't know if anyone's been to Ghana, it's freaking hot. Don't get me wrong, being that early, wasn't, the sun wasn't that high in the sky, but it's still hot, it still gets hot. So we had to train, and I mean, we did like 24 rounds on the bag, um, on, on heavy bag, um, we'll do pads with him probably 10 rounds. You know, stuff I'm not even accustomed to because at the end of the day, you know, they, they've, got, they've got their way of doing things. You know, over here, you know, we're trying to make sure we train you for an amateur fight, you know, so we keep within that three rounds, four rounds, five rounds of things. Um, but over there with him, it's just like do or die kind of thing. And we would train so hard to the point where your socks are sweating. Like I've never had my socks like drenched in sweat, my shorts drenched in sweat. I've had a top, but like head to toe. So, uh, and I mean, I'm not calling any names, but one of the fighters was so thirsty, he, he had to drink his own sweat from his, oh. um, <laughs> from his skin. <laughs> and I'm not saying any names, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a snitch, but it was that bad. But um, that was good. It got, I think, it probably physically it probably wasn't the best preparation, but mentally um, it was probably the best um, uh, preparation because it's not easy, you know. Um, going, I'd, I'd never really had an international experience other than going to Vegas with you guys and fighting um, in Vegas and fighting the American kids, but that was it. But then, yeah, so, you know, so we, I mean, we'd done Vegas, so we had had some international experience already, yeah, um, etc. and. So you 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 kind of you've done a lot. You've done the world. You've done the yeah. Harringay Box Cup and yeah yeah yeah. Done, done done all that stuff. I mean, it's 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 a quite a heavy amateur career. How many fights did you have? I think fifty four. So, so 54. it's a heavy amateur career. Um, and you've, I mean, you've turned pro now, right? Yeah. So let me let me explain. In terms of like pro, anyone can turn pro, right? So don't be don't be impressed when someone turns around and says, "Yeah, I'm a pro, I'm a pro boxer," you know. Anyone, don't get me wrong, if you have no experience and you say you're going to go pro, you've got to prove it to the boxing board, British board, all right? And they have to, obviously, if you have limited fighting experience, they're going to, they're going to do like a, a review, I forget what they call it, a review of him, watch you, watch you, all right? Um, now, 
Yes, I had, I think I had a decent. I'm not going to say it was great. I've got to represent. You know, got a few trophies here and there. Got you know, open class boy in a few international fights. But I, what happened to me is that I missed. I completely missed my um, my. What you give me the word, Lou? Opportunity or my the the prime time to turn over. Right. Um, yeah, and I, I missed it. I missed when, it. when you say turnover, you mean turnover to be a pro. You yeah, missed from that. Amateur to pro. You, I'm, you're saying I'm you missed that, that prime window. Yeah, the prime window. I mean, when I went to London's, um, AB, I think um, someone, one promoter was like, oh, yeah, you think I'm going pro? And I was like, what? It's way too early. And then I completely missed it as well. So, um, yeah, that's been my thing. So, how I see it now is that I didn't obviously get the best deal. I'll be honest. And, and when I say being best still, you know, you get some fighters where they don't, they either just on, from day one on a contract, so they're doing it full time, or two, or maybe say three, because you could, um, one being that you've got to sell tickets. Now, I've got to sell tickets uh, for my fight, which is not ideal. Luckily, I've met a lot of people along the way that will buy tickets. Um, yeah. You know, um, I've PTs um, at your gym. And I've met a lot of good people from there that, you know, they can buy the tickets, you know. And I know, I know, I won't say I know some celebrities, but I know a few people, you know, uh, a few little names um, that would come and support uh, me as well. But at the end of the day, I still have to sell tickets and it's not easy. Um, um, and, I, and I'm also like coming of age, you know, I'm 30. So I'm no like spring chicken. Uh, as much as like what I would say within myself, I don't feel that I'm old. You know, I'm, I never really, like, got drunk. You know, I wasn't really mad. I really, you know, don't get me wrong. I, back in, back when I was, like, even before boxing, so when I was 15, I would go out and, you know, I was quite, you know, I had a, had a bit of a party life at 15, believe it or not, going out. You got out of like, system early. Yeah, going out, yeah, going out to, like, over 25s when I was 15. It was, it was mad. So um, I did it really, really early, and I stopped it really, really early as well. Um, but... Yeah, so I, I I would say I've still got to sell tickets and it's not easy because, you know, I live alone. Um, I've got to provide for, you know, my you know, I pay my own bills. Um, I've got to work and then I've got to find time to train and then I've got to sell tickets. So it's not easy. Um, it's not yeah, easy. That's the but, thing people don't see about pro boxing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's harder than amateur boxing. You've got... Yeah, amateur was... You've got all this pressure... Uh, and, and I don't mean hard. I don't actually. I don't know if I mean yeah. the fights are harder as such. I don't yeah. mean that. What I mean is like yeah. you've got to sell tickets most of the time. By the time you paid your coach and your travel expenses, mm. it's that you're making absolutely zero money. Yeah. People don't realise that, and you're fighting yeah. on all these small hall shows. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just like unless you. But British Warrior is a good promoter, by the way. So let me just shout that out now. Um, I'm under British British Warrior, and they're great. Shameless plug. Shameless plug is all good. But um, yeah. it, 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 it's, it's, you know, it's not even that. It's just that t you have to keep fighting and fighting and then it's like you've got to win 10, 11, 12 fights in a row yeah, just to get like a, some sort of English or Southern area or British title shot if you're really lucky. Yeah. Um, it's like, well, boxing's weird. They build you up. So you lose one fight and all of a sudden you're a nobody. Yeah. And all that graft you've done, all that good you've done, it is wiped out and you've got to start again. Yeah. Very, very rarely does uh, there's been a few fighters especially in recent british history i don't know so yeah. much about the americans that have had yeah. almost handed to them on a plate they've yeah. come out of the olympics um done well at the olympics i'm not taking that away because that, that's not yeah. an easy thing to yeah, do yeah it's not easy at all it's freaking hard yeah i mean that's hard but then it's like they're managed really well fighting uh, controversial level fighters maybe sometimes for too long and yeah. they're built up massively in the public eye to, and guided right. And it's almost like they can't do any wrong for a period of time. And, mm. and that's where the money is made. When the media and the, and, and the, the yeah. TV is on yeah. a fighter's side, it's like they almost can't do any wrong. Um, I mean, I, I'll name drop Amir Khan as a good example. And I'm not yeah. taking anything away from Amir Khan. Yeah. And, and this is not me being negative to him. It's a good, talented fighter. He done well in the Olympics. But in the media's eyes, I mean, he was, there was a bit of turmoil in his early pro career. He was getting decked, put down. Yeah. Then he got knocked out badly by Brady Prescott. But it's, the media couldn't wait to try and build him back up. 
And if you're lucky enough to have that, then you'll make good yeah. money. Um, yeah. On the other side of things, there's the ones that do it the hard way. The Manny Pacquiao's or Floyd Mayweather's of this world, they do it hard, man. They, people mm. don't see that. They graft and they're having these hard fights for years yeah. and years and just winning and winning and, and building themselves up. And all of a sudden, you get that, that crossroads fight where you fight a big name and you win it. And all of a sudden, you're, you're a face and you can get yeah. the fight. <laughs> but just to cut you, so like how I've seen it, like I get I, what you're saying is a hundred percent. But I'm just gonna be so I'm so like been so raw with myself now. Like how I see it is that I could have easily just like packed it in and said, "No, nah, I'm done with it." What I said to myself is that, "All right, I'm not getting any younger." Um, I'm 30 years old, so it's like do or die now. So how I've said it is that I'm gonna end of the day. The reason why my, my boxing for um, my passion for boxing, I want to say it's it's gone. It's not gone, but it's slightly it has changed. All right, and that's with age. Um, you know, with you know, the experiences I've had, and I think my main passion for boxing is the fact that I could retire my mum earlier than later from doing any other type of job. And that is, that is it. Like- I think a lot of people are the same though. Yeah, um, it's, it's before I would say, yeah, and nice and have this uh, career that everyone knew me, like, I, couldn't be, I couldn't care less. It's honestly boxed to a level where I can provide for my mum and my dad, get them retired. Like if even after that, I could walk away into the sunset, I'll be happy. I would absolutely be ha so happy. Taking it down, bring it more to myself, obviously, you know, pay off what I wanted to pay, be, you know, debt free. Um, that would be great. And then, you know, a lot of um, under that is then help everyone else connect to me that I could help. Um, and that is my passion. As much as I do love boxing, I love it. It's, it's, it's nothing, you you know, it. there's nothing like having a nice little scrap, you know, last thing like that one, two, you know, it, it, there's nothing that beats it and winning. Uh, but and now, there's, there's this massive family aspect with boxing that someone will never understand. I mean, we've yeah. got a really close knit group of, of fighters or ex fighters that we always go out and meet up, and it's like a close family. But also, a boxing coach is different to any other coach. A boxing coach yeah. has such a profound um, effect on a young fighter's life. Yeah. It will carry with you forever. I can't explain it. Yeah. We recently lost someone close to us, a coach, Colin yeah. Webster, um, from yeah. his bloody coronavirus. Um, uh, and, yeah. and it like, hurt. Like, for me, it was, I was really emotional. And I hadn't, I hadn't seen Colin in a couple of years, but he was a big part of all of us growing up. And yeah. there's, there's that side of boxing as well. I mean, that, that guy, <laughs> that guy brought me down a peg or two, straight talker, <laughs> smashed me up, smashed me up several times, but it's all done from a good place. Yeah. Yeah, Colin. Uh, Colin. Yeah, Colin. Me and Colin were, were we were tight, and I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't processed it one bit. It's uh, I don't like anyone else. Everyone else. I don't do well with death, and I don't really. I probably. I just don't think about it, and it, it's not healthy. But. I mean, it's it's just I can't I can't I can't process that he's gone from this. Do you understand? I hadn't you know been something else, but it just this was only something that came up. I didn't think it was going to be a you know, turnout to this this pandemic that's going on. I didn't think, and then for it to take someone like Colin, it still hasn't sunk. It, it's like okay. Listen, so, well, we're we're going off the beaten track a little bit here, but let me yeah. give people an example of like you guys that go to the gym and do your CrossFit and, and yeah. powerlifting which I do now I complete yeah. powerlifting so I'm allowed to say this but and go to our do gym work you go in and you work your ass off and full respect but there's mm. a slight difference and mm, I'm telling yeah. you that I went in and I told this story recently on a video as a <laughs> tribute to Colin but I went into that club on my after my second bout and I'd won fighter of the night and won both my first fights. And I was carrying this swagger. I'd fought really well in both my first fights, really kind of bullied the opponents. So it was like the type of victory. And I thought I was like unbeatable already. And I got this massive trophy that the head coach gave out at, at Finchley in front of everyone. It said Louis won fighter of the night because I'd left early and not got the trophy on the day. So I was like, yeah, all pumped up. 
So me, me being me, I start working on the bag nearest to the door because I'm obviously something subconscious. I want people to come and like, oh, you got fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's such a big move. Train, they're like, oh, well done on fire and So I'm not even training properly. I'm hitting this bag. I'm stopping to chat get my little pump up with my ego. And Colin, the coach sat on the desk. Colin always sat on his desk as you come into the club and he would take the money. Now Colin is the biggest no-nonsense straight talker ever. If you're one penny short, you ain't training, right? <laughs> if you're messing about in the club, you're not doing your bag work, you're hearing that shout, that voice. Effing hell are you doing? You here to mess around the train? Anyway. He told yeah. me two or three times, do your work properly. Stop flipping talking. Who do you think you are? And it was like a little bit of banter behind it, but he meant it. And I wouldn't stop. Anyway, he walks off. I thought, oh, he never gets off that desk. And he's looking at me and he walks across the club and he's staring at me. Oh, I'm in trouble here. I just knew it. Yeah. So he comes back with a pair of pads. And I've never, <laughs> at this point, I mean, it was early ish days. I've never seen Colin do pads. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. let's go. And what? He goes, come on, let's go. Pads. Oh, no, man. I knew something was up. So he gets me into boxing starts. Normally, you're expected to start like jab or one, two, some yeah. technical stuff, something. Yeah. 20 hooks. <laughs> what? He goes, 20 hooks as hard as you can. Well, 20 oh, hooks. We in these hooks. Ah, 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 ah. Like putting everything to the hooks. He's screaming harder. I don't even think I can go any harder. When I got to 20 hooks, I'm telling you now, there was another 100. No. He was, what? No, you're lying. He made me do, it was like, I don't even, I wish I had it on video. It was well in excess of like 100 hooks. It must have been like 150 no. black no. out hooks. We're just, him holding the pads, no movement. So I'm getting more tired because there's no, there's no, you've got connection. Yeah. I'm like, the pad is boom, boom. Boom. He, we stopped. I was hands on knees, like, <sighs> and he just walked off. He walked off, left me, never spoke to me for about two weeks after that. That's, yeah, that's yeah. a boxing coach. If that's he, a boxing coach. If he dealt with you, he dealt with Yeah. He <laughs> was making me punch harder and harder, and there's, there's never nothing left by the end. It was so slow. <laughs> But that, oh, that, that, I mean, that's, that's boxing. If you're not prepared for that and yeah. you're, you're going to have your ego dealt with and you're, yeah. you're going to be tested in these weird ways, but it sets you up really well for life. Boxing's a unique sport. It sets yeah, you yeah. up well I mean, life's tough, tough challenges. I mean, I had a lot of coaches, um, but definitely um, I've, end, I've ended up with my amateur coach as a pro coach, um, Danny Oliver who's obviously um, son of Jimmy Oliver, which is kind of like weird when you think about it because I'd gone through so many um, coaches. I mean, not so many. I probably had probably four, four or three before him. And I've ended up with Danny. Um, and yeah, I, I, anytime I can have pads, Danny, I, Danny's probably, our relationship is funny. Danny's probably, and I say this in the nicest way, probably dislikes me because doing Working on pads with Danny is just like, I remember watching him with like um, Ozzy, um, Ozzy, um, Yako, and just watching the way he did pads. And he's a bit of a, I want to say perfectionist, but he's just got a certain way about him. You know, he's clean cut. He does everything so clean. And I like that. That's how I am. I like to things to be clean cut and done really like, you can just see what was happening. And I remember just, you know, being distracted in in the boxing gym and watching Danny from afar train Aussie and being like oh like that I would love to be part of that pads I mean yeah, you know in a, in a, pads, Danny. yeah really good and it's just really I just got it and and I remember just just looking at them them two train and just thinking oh wow like you know I, I wish I could do pads uh, with Danny <laughs> that, that was, you know, I didn't you know I would stop between like shadow boxing probably or something like that and I never really thought about it um, I ended up with Danny. Um, only because I was training with his uncle, um, John Oliver, at the time. But I think he flew out to watch um, Mayweather. May I want to say Mayweather. I don't think it was Mayweather Hatton. 
What's the, what's the, who, who did he fight? So he had Mayweather Hatton, then he Hello. fought who? Pacquiao. Yeah, I want to say um, Cotto, actually. I want to say Cotto. I went to the Cotto. Yeah. Uh, what, what year was that? I went to Pacquiao Cotto. Bingo. What, what, what year was that? I can't remember. 2009? Maybe. 9, 10, around that time. Yeah. Around that time. Think, yeah, anyway, around that time. And then he was flying out, so... I was like, oh, how can you be going away? But um, John Oliver knew Mayweather. Um, they're pretty close. Um, I don't know how close, but they, they, they go out there quite often. Um, and they were going to see him. And, you know, he bought the tickets and whatever. And I think I had a tournament coming up. I think I had the, yeah, I had the uh, novices coming up. And I was a bit worried, obviously, you know, I was getting on now in boxing. And then he goes, ah, oh, it's all right. I'll leave you with um, Danny. And then I was like, my eyes just lit up. And I was like, oh, wow, you know, um, I've always thought about it like years before that to do pads with um, that, not taking it from, uh, away from John, because I love, you know, John developed me a lot, but it was just something about it, you know, I used to watch Danny do pads. So he left me with um, Danny and I just had like probably the tournament of my life and it seemed like everything that he told me to do, I would literally, when you go um, in a novice, novice tournament, you're fighting like every Saturday yeah. and every Saturday, um, you know, I was like, basically stopping people, um, stopping, just boxing really well. And everything Danny would show me each week to take into the fight, I was doing. And it was really weird because Danny lives something like Doncaster or something like that. So he couldn't come to, or he has something, um, he has to, every weekend he couldn't go. And really he was just like a standing coach. So he wouldn't come to the fights um, because Sean and um, Gary would do, um, would do the tournament fights on the weekend. So I would see Danny Monday, Wednesday, probably Friday, probably not if we were going to fight on Saturday. Um, and then I would win on the weekend, go back with Danny, learn something new, use it in the fight on the, on the, uh, the weekend, win again. And it was just, a, it was crazy. And then from there, yeah, I didn't win the whole tournament, but I think, you know, personally, when I lost in the semis, I, I you know, I thought I won it. But, um, and it just stuck. And from there, it was like, who else can I go with? So when John returned, even he knew, it was like, you know, we'd done so much together in a short period of time that he just left me with Danny and then you know, I just worked through with Danny all the way. But um, yeah, the connection with, like you were saying about connection, was just unbelievable. He's just like, I just love being around him. He's just funny. He's got like, to me, it's, he's got like that Del Boy kind of like character he kind of he's like small kind of resembles him as well but i've just got that to david jason <laughs> look about him it's just he just makes me um yeah he just makes me he makes me laugh absolutely makes me laugh um you know you kind of like i irritate him and i love that that relationship where i, I kind of yeah he, he you know you know he, he says he, he loves working with me but i kind of irritate him and i love that chemistry where he's just constantly you know, he's always trying to, I'm that annoying kid that, you know, wants to work with him. And, you know, that's not usually the case, you know. With coaches, it's like they're trying to get their boxers to do this, do that. I'm always trying to impress Danny. Um, and, you know, you've just got so much banter. Um, and it's just, it, like I said, he always puts me in my place. He's very straightforward with me. Um, and I think, yeah, like you said, coaches, boxing coaches, there's something else, you know. I yeah, see him more, yeah. you know, you, you, imagine you've got someone that helps you in a situation where you could get your ass, like, handed to you. You go back to the corner and they help you out of a hard situation. So going back to what you said about, like, how boxing throws, it's like life itself, you know, you can imagine having someone directly help you in a situation where you could get, like, embarrassed or get something, uh -huh. get hurt, and then them to help you to turn around and have your hand lifted that connection you don't get it anywhere else mm -hmm. you know to say that football coaches are not doing their bit or any other sport but there's just something about that that needing that you know you're, you're gonna get if you go to a away show and you're fighting like their best kid you know you've got everyone shouting to get you like they want to see you on the floor you know i know no, no one wants to see anyone get hurt more than 10 seconds you know but it is still at the point, you know, I've had, I've had all kinds of things. I've had, uh, I've had like name calling. I've had like monkey chants, apparently, which like I've never heard, but I've been told, you know, um, during the fight. And it is crazy. You've, it is, but then you've got this person that's there is going to help you. They're there to help you in a situation. And then when you get that result, 
it's just it's the best feeling. And I, even remember, I remember people. once before a fight, um, I was fighting a gypsy boy and, the, and, and his family or friends or whoever, they yeah. called me in the bathroom before the fight and said they were going to kill me if I won the fight. <laughs> <laughs> it was like half an hour before the battle. I, thought, oh, God. I love gypsy folk, man. I mean, like, not what that, man. No, I'm not, I'm not cut out for this, for this shit. This is not cool. And then I, I, I won as well. Then I, <laughs> And I, and I bet they gave you props with after. Yeah, just nothing happened after, actually. Oh, it was weird, but oh okay. It was, it was weird. Like, I, I lit him up a bit as well. Like, I really hurt <laughs> him. And, and, I, and I remember thinking, I don't even know if I should be doing this. This is, this is not cool. He was all right after, funny enough. And I think that's... Yeah, yeah right usually the way, yeah. It's, it's just a weird thing. I mean, most... <laughs> he said he's going to kill you. <laughs> you, don't, you don't deal with something like that, most things. Yeah. But, Listen, we've yeah. only got a few minutes left. Um, yeah, cool. Um, we, we've had what I like is today. We've had a good insight of not so much to like how many times you've trained and whatnot, but yeah. what being a boxer is about and, and, and the behind the scenes and the, the camaraderie and the, the, mm. the mental and psychological side mm. and the lack of money. What, um, what's your, you know, in brief, what's your plans uh, so, you, you so like, like I fight. said, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm two fights in. All right. And well, this year, this year I said to myself, I'm going to push for at least like five fights, try and get some sort of like, um, shot if I could, but clearly, um, COVID-19 had a whole <laughs> different, yeah. um, agenda for the whole world. So yeah. I guess, you know, I can't really say much, but as soon as I get, get back into the ring um i'm gonna just put everything into it put my heart and soul into it um you know just remain focused you, anyone that's up up and coming win lose or draw you have to stay focused you can't allow you know you can't allow don't don't what i would say you can lose a fight but don't lose that that routine of being at that level and I'm not saying that you've got to be 100% because you can't be because you'll burn yourself out. But that routine of training and running, right, that is the best thing. That's the best win you can get, you know. Um, and I remember finding it really hard if you lost in the amateurs, come back the next week. I mean, that was to, to train because you just lose everything. But that is where you need to keep going because there's so many times when I did stay in the, stay in the ring and um, stay in the gym and then something would come up. Something would come up, and because I, you know, kept up with it, I was in better condition. The worst thing was going away from it because of something happened, and then the opportunity comes up, and it's like a flip, you know. Luckily, I got away with it with Ghana, but I mean, I think there was other things, other powers at work there that helped me out. But you know, you've got to stay, you've got to stay focused, um, and it's like a case where you know, you've got, yeah, stay focused, stay consistent. Um, stay confident in yourself all right because end of the day i don't i think hard work speaks much more than like everyone knows these are all cliches i'm throwing out but you've just you know opportunities will arise if you stay consistent to yourself um yeah that's what i want to say and for me look uh, either i get something or i retire and i have no i have no like ego to say that i'll easily say that and I, I, I mean of course, you, you want to be boxing full time, but if I got to retire, boxing has given me so much understanding of the world and myself that everything else is easy. Every, sorry, I'm not, I'm not saying it's gonna be easy, but I mean, there's nothing. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing harder than knowing that there's a man out there that's training to knock your head off. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, in front of people. So, you know, anything else that I'm gonna challenge doesn't really. It, I've had, I've had, you know, better training mentally. Um, to deal with, deal with. So yeah, it's either you're gonna see me next, well, let's say next year on your television screen, um, or I'm just gonna be a probably a little Google research um, search, you know, of Norris Thompson winning that boxing at the Worlds. Saying that, you know, when I boxed at the Worlds, um, who was there? A few names were there, you know, Errol Spence, ah. Emma Jinko, uh, Yusik was there. Um, who else was there? Loads of boxes. All the GB boys were there as well. Um, and it's crazy just to see them all doing what they're doing. So, you know, if it's, if, it's, if it's meant to be, it will happen. If it's not, like I said, I've taken so much from it. Um, 
you know, I'm, I don't, I'm not someone that seeks fame, to be honest, um, even that of money as well. But, you know, I want to make sure that I do well and I do the best for myself, you know, and that's what it's all about for me. I don't care what anyone says. Um, I'm not scared of anyone. I'm not trying to be some sort of like some guy that doesn't want to step on anyone's toes. But what I've learned is just you've got to be happy with yourself and what you want to do. Um, not just fall into this whole thing that, oh, I've got to do this. I've got to be this, put pressure on yourself to do this and do that. No, you've got to be happy in what you're doing. And to me, to like I said, to retire my my parents, that's me happy. Uh, that, 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 that all the punches that I've had to take and give out, dish out, and all the tr- blood, sweat, and tears of boxing will be worth it, honestly. Yeah, that's good. It's good, good advice. What uh, yeah. we got about one minute. We've got to wrap it yeah, up. Man. What... um. You personal train, um, you do a lot of boxing yeah. stuff and functional training. If somebody yeah. wants to find you, you've got quite an active and uh, quite an active Instagram. Where can they find you? I'll put it in the uh, show. So I'm on um, at Neuron Fitness. So that's uh, N-U-R-O-N Fitness, yeah. Neuron yeah. Fitness. So um, add me. Um, if you want me to add you back, just like a picture and I'll add you back. Sometimes people don't want to be followed back, believe it or not by a personal trainer. So I think they sometimes feel a bit guilty. Yeah. Um, but if you want me to follow you back, I will gladly do that. And yeah, so drop me a message. Look, I'm straight up. Um, I'm help. I tried to help people. And like I said, look, what Louis, what Louis, what you've been talking about is, is great. You know, just be straight up. I'm not about showing off. I train real people with real issues who've got real goals. Um, most of my, most of my client base are like, I'll say, female ladies probably um it's weird it's ladies probably aged from like 25 to 35 but then then i get a lot of um, young male males that are athletes so i've had like semi pro golfer um people that wanted box as well so um yeah and they're the two um audiences i attract it seems anyway Good. All right, cool. So um, I'll put your link in the show notes, but get in touch, guys. Norris is a good trainer. Yeah. I've seen him in action myself. Um, Thank you. And, it, you know, like, it's, it, it's about having a trainer that cares. Um, you know, we, there's too many trainers out there at the mo- nowadays that are very narcissistic and ego-centered. And if you want someone that cares about your goals, is going to push you hard, learn a skill through boxing, or, or just, just get a little bit fitter and functional strength um, is the right sort of, trainer for you but we've got to wrap it up um i've enjoyed it today we will we'll definitely do this again um and we'll we'll look at maybe different topic about around boxing about the training involved and and what's involved and what you've done and any tips for people as well that 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 are boxers or aspiring boxers for training but we've got to wrap it up it's been great having you on and um good luck well when whenever your next pro fight is after corona good luck but i'll be there supporting you yeah, thank you. All right, man. Yeah. Take care. Yeah, talk Bye. soon.